Good afternoon, everybody. Combining state and independent education is already a, a very, very clear feature of uh, our educational sector in England. And it is going to become, I'm sure, an increasing uh, trend for reasons I hope to explain. My, my background and perspective is uh, primarily through my last 15 years in headship uh, in England at BDELS. And BDELS is a 3 to 18 school, so I've got a pretty clear sense of the uh, spectrum there. The HMC role means I am getting an increasing perspective on uh, the broader educational sphere across England. So, why are we going to see more of this? Well, firstly and obviously it has to do with the growing cost of education. And that is education in its entirety. I'm sure I make myself rather unpopular with uh, younger colleagues at school when at the same time as congratulating them on the birth of their first child, I do say you do realize that you have got uh, up to 25 years of educational costs ahead of you. Uh, you just need to, uh, to enjoy it. Um, uh, th there is, at the same time, no better way of spending your money than on your children's education. Uh, if you want an easy, rather glib quote, Bill Gates's comment, uh, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Uh, and none of us want that. So that's my perspective, 3 to 18 schooling. It's not just about cost though, it's about social mobility and inclusiveness. I think that an increasing proportion of parents who can afford independent education, 3 to 18, and then university education, sometimes paying for that up front, feel that it is good for their children to have some time when they are not in the independent sector. Let's have some data, because we all love data. First of all, data from ISC, the Independent Schools Council. There are 7% of the school children in the UK in uh, uh, private education, independent education. But that varies greatly depending on which age you pick. So of England's six-year-olds, only 3% are in independent education. Get to 11, and it's 6%. Get to 16, and taking the two six four years in their entirety, some 15% of the children of England are in independent education. So the, the connection between state and independent is completely porous. It's porous for another reason as well, which is this, that very often when children are in maintained sector education, they are buying in private support through tutoring. And I didn't tell you as largely a London-based audience about uh, tutoring. Of course, tutoring is also being used to enhance, theoretically, uh, the already uh, expensive education that people are playing, paying for in the independent sector. A bit of data from my own place, uh, from the BDELS schools. Our 11 plus entry into our prep school, Dunhurst, about 30% of the people coming in there are coming from the state primary sector and that is a very very uh, sensible and well tried route if you've got strong primary schools in your area as indeed we have in East Hampshire then it's very very uh, reasonable and fair and practical to move at that point into the traditional starting point for secondary education uh, in England at 16 plus, when we have an entry of about 35 new students joining our sixth form, about 11% of our students will come directly from the state sector at that point. 
And those are parents who are making a very clear decision that they want to spend their money uh, on the two years in the sixth form. Why? Well, I think that the sixth form in our best independent schools uh, is offering an enriched experience which is an ideal pre-university experience. My school is primarily boarding in the senior bit. So what these parents are partly reckoning on is that the experience of being a boarder at a good independent school is going to be an excellent springboard not only into the best universities but into adapting to living away from home. What are these people looking for at different stages? Well, pre age 11, I think the social inclusion, the desire to ensure that their youngsters know their communities and aren't entirely in being educated in a relatively privileged uh, bastion, I think that is very, very much uh, uppermost in their minds, along with very sensible uh, um, harbouring of their resources financially. Post-16, when people move as they do in, in quite significant numbers in East Hampshire from independent schools to the very, very good independent, sorry, very good maintained sector, six form colleges, they're looking in certain cases for a huge range of subjects on offer uh, in the sixth form and those sixth form colleges. Finally, let me tell you a little bit about what I think people are trying to avoid uh, in the maintained sector. And this is by no means uh, uh, something where there is statistical analysis or proof for it. It strikes me that the part of the maintained sector that holds the most doubts in independent sector parents' minds is the 11 to 16 bit. Uh, and I suspect that this largely has to do with concerns about disruptive, quote unquote, adolescent behavior within the maintained sector. And this will be based, no doubt, as much on, on, on prejudice as it is on actuality. But th that is the point when, for lots and lots of parents, they're concerned that their children are going to be subject uh, to influences that they won't necessarily be subject to to the same degree in the independent sector. I think that at, at 16 plus, as I said, they're often buying in uh, not just to the pre-university experience, but to very, very detailed uh, and expert university advice uh, which our schools offer uh, in spades. I'm going to stop there and uh, hand over to Rafe, uh, who will no doubt have all sorts of uh, other thoughts. And I greatly look forward to your questions uh, shortly. Rafe. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon to you. Uh, I'm Rafe Lucas from the, the Good Schools Guide. Uh, there aren't any general rules about moving between state and independent. Everything depends on your child, on the schools that you've got available to you, and how much money you've got available to you. Uh, I've, I've done both. I've moved from state to independent and independent to state. Uh, as I moved around the country and as the schools I had available to me uh, changed. And these days, there really is no fundamental problem with it at all. Uh, the last move I made was my son from state school to independent at sixth form because there was no chance of him doing any work in a state sixth form. He got, he, we put him in Hertwood House, which is one of the schools here, and he didn't come home. Although he was a weekly boarder, he didn't come home for the first six weeks because they wouldn't let him home until he did the work. And <laughs> So it was a great success. Uh, that, but equally, earlier in his life, he had been changed, moved from independent, which we were using in London because we weren't next to a good primary, uh, to uh, to state when we moved down to Hampshire because there was a lovely primary school on the doorstep. Uh, and really, you can switch happily between, in principle, happily between the systems. 
You do, though, have to be aware of the various hurdles uh, that are there. Independent schools, by and large, want your child to hop over a fence of some kind or another before they'll let them in. And you need to be aware of what that is and what it takes. Pretty well all of them these days are enthusiastic about getting kids in from the state sector, and if you ask them, they will tell you how to do it. And that's probably going to involve tutors. It will certainly involve uh, a good deal of support from yourselves. But do pay attention to it, and it is going to be particular, going to be different from school to school, the way they treat, the way independent schools treat entrance from, from state schools. Uh, and give yourself at least a couple of years to prepare for the change if you're hoping to get into anything by, by way of a, of a selective independent school. Though, of course, you know, there are bits of the country where, you, where, the, where, the, where the move is the other way around. The parents will spend their money on the, grammar, on the, uh, the prep schools to get them into the grammar schools so they don't have to, to, uh, to pay thereafter. But there are so few grammar schools in London, and they're so oversubscribed, that it's, it's as much a matter of chance as anything else whether your child gets in. Uh, so, but if you, if you moved out to Kent or to, uh, to Berkshire, there you would have enough grammar schools to be sure that with good education and good tutoring, you would get your child into a decent state secondary school and after that not have to worry. So it all depends on, on where you find yourself. Kids are surprisingly adaptable. Um, they will move from one system to the other with a bit of hesitation, but generally without too much of a worry. I, I remember Keith in his first term, I think, as uh, the headmaster of Beedales. And Beedales is a school where you think the headmaster really should be Albus Dumbledore and come with great long flowing robes and, and that sort of attitude to education. Keith turned up, cavalry twills, pop, beautifully polished brown shoes, tweed jacket. Uh, he's adapted. He's now one of the best headmasters that Beedells has ever had, and I think Beedells loves you deeply. And it, uh, it took a bit of adaptation on both sides, and if adults can do it, then so can kids. But you do need to be you do need to be careful. There are some there are still some state schools where it is very hard to be a rich kid and you want to watch out for that in London. Um, not all state secondaries have a good atmosphere for kids who've been to a prep school. Uh, so, beware of it. You need to know that your child will make the social transition and, and will be happy. Uh, there are, there used to be, one of the reasons that people switched to independent education was to get into a good university. Uh, that's, that's slightly changed over the last few years. Universities are now very clearly thinking of favouring kids who've been to state schools, favouring kids from more difficult backgrounds. You'll see the same pattern in employers later on, that they will tend to discount uh, kids who've been through a good system. It's still the case, though, that it's important to choose a good school. Your child will gain far more from being at a good school and a school that is right for them than any university or employer will discount. Uh, but don't go for the name. It isn't the name that counts anymore. It's whether the education is going to be right for and will suit your child. But, so other, but don't be put off in changing to the independent sector because you think actually Oxford only wants state school kids these days. No, they want kids who've been really well educated. Uh, so go for that, go for the school and not for the batch. And the last thing to realise about state education is you will have to commit a lot of your own time to educating your child if you head for the state system. My youngest daughter is currently in a country independent school. She is doing a 12-hour day. You do not get that in the state system. You will find your 
the school day ends at 3.30 and there's nothing much happening after that, you will be responsible for providing a lot of the extras, a lot of the outside, a lot of the breadth of education which will come to you as part of the package in an independent school. So realise if you're swapping to state that you are lumping yourselves with a considerable share of your child's education. But other than that, no, look at these, look at what you've got around you. London has some wonderful primary schools in it. Lots of people, if you're, if you're securely within catchment, that's a really sensible way to begin education. Secondary schools, it's much patchier. There are some wonderful ones. Camden Girls, if I was living next to Camden Girls, they wouldn't send a daughter anywhere else. Um, but you've got to be absolutely in the right bit of London to get into that. Uh, other than that, it's will that school suit my child? Will my particular child flourish there? Has it got what my child takes? The nice thing about independent schools is you don't have to worry about catchment. All you have to worry about is trucking across London. You've got far more to choose from. It's far easier to find a school that suits your, suits your child. But uh, keep your eyes up. No, there's nothing. The state system is, is in really good nick at the moment, generally. With luck, you'll find a school that you can use for all a part of your child's education. Uh, but you do have to be absolutely in the right place at the right time.